So Jordan, I know it's cliche, but we should probably take this lens to the Calgary Zoo. It makes sense for wildlife and macro no, 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 shots. No, no. Jeff Keller already took the same lens to the Seattle Zoo for his sample gallery. Yeah, but we have to. I mean, I, I don't know. People will be able to decide if they like Seattle Zoo or Calgary Zoo better, I guess. Let us know in the comments. Calgary <sighs> Zoo or Seattle Zoo? It's going to be the Seattle Zoo. <laughs> Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here. I've got the brand new Tamron 150 to 500 Di3 VXD VC. Uh, so this is the new Sony E-mount telephoto lens here from Tamron. I'm excited to play with it. We've got a good location. We're just gonna get sample photos in the Calgary Zoo. Yeah, let's go see what this can do on some wildlife. So you really want to do the montage music for this I next I got it bit. covered, here we go. Okay, no, that's good. Jordan, that's good, yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll use the regular music. All right, we're back. We had a nice time at the zoo. We've had a chance to review the images. Let's talk about the Tamron 150 to 500. The first thing that I noticed was actually how it was quite easy to carry. Although this is a telephoto lens and a fairly bulky lens, it really wasn't that heavy or that burdensome to carry it around. So this is actually less than a knocked. It's 1.88 kilograms, which is this many pounds Jordan do it. And so really I didn't feel burdened by it at all. And I think a big part of that is this is a specific mirrorless design. This is not an SLR telephoto design with an extended barrel to cover, you know, what an SLR's flange distance would be. This is actually designed specifically for mirrorless. You can actually see the back element there very close to the back of the lens. Now this means that you're not gonna be able to use teleconverters or anything, but it also means that this lens is gonna be a little bit more compact. Now build quality on the 150 to 500 matches the other high-end Tamrons that we've played with. It does have sort of a plasticky feeling outer chassis, but everything feels tight and solid. Uh, I do like the zoom ring, and I'm going to mention here on the zoom ring, you can push it forward, and then it actually locks it right there at that zoom focal length. So that's really nice if you don't want things to creep or you don't want to accidentally move it. Now, we were concerned that this would accidentally lock when you're shooting, but the fact of the matter is, although it constantly does it when I'm just fiddling with the lens, when I'm actually shooting the lens and pulling the lens towards my face, there's no risk of that happening. So every good telephoto lens needs to have a nice balanced tripod collar. This is included. I like that it's already cut for Arca Swiss style ball heads and gimbals. That's a nice convenient factor. Now, as far as rotating the collar, so you want to do vertical shots, unfortunately, there's no actual mechanical click stop. I mean, that's a nice feature. It's missing here. We just get paint markers, but you know, you'll get used to that. It's not a huge deal. Uh, as far as controls go on here, the standard stuff, we've got focus limiter switches, autofocus and manual focus. I will Will say though on that topic the manual focus ring it does feel a little bit sloppy and it's focused by wire on the sony bodies so uh you know manual focus was quite fiddly it's going to take some practice and i know for video work jordan's not going to like the manual focus capability on this however when it also comes to stability this lens does have tamron's vibration control you've got your on off switch here and of course multiple modes whether you're doing stationary or panning uh, the last thing I want to mention here on this lens, it is rugged, it is weather sealed as we'd expect, so don't worry about taking this lens out on overcast or rainy days when you're trying to hunt for wildlife shots. Now, a lens that you're going to use a lot for wildlife needs to focus quick, but this has Tamron's linear motor in it, very similar to what we saw in the 70 to 180. We were impressed with that, and we're impressed with this. It was silent, very fast. As you can see here, it's snappy, even from close to far distances. I was very confident that this lens was able to focus and track the animals that I was trying to shoot. Uh, one thing I will say, though, this is third party on a Sony body, so if you're using the A9 or the A1, keep in mind that Sony will limit its maximum frame rate to 15 frames per second when you using a lens like this. Now, what about for video work? Well, I've already talked about how I didn't love the manual focus control, but what about breathing? It was actually very impressive. You can see here at 150 millimeters, the breathing is there, uh, it's minimal. But when I went to 500, which is often where you're gonna use something like this, it's actually very well controlled as you can see here. So for video shooters, if you can get over the poor manual focus uh, by wire, you actually might really like this for video work. Now I'm happy to report that when it came to optical issues and defects that we might encounter, 
winter on the 150 to 500, there really wasn't anything major at all. I mean, first off, no problems with flare. You got a nice big front hood here as well to protect the front element from stray light. Uh, chromatic aberration where you get color on the edges of high contrast areas, didn't really notice anything there that I couldn't easily correct for in post. And really, longitudinal chromatic aberration, the only thing that's really difficult to fix in post that we'd worry about, on this lens it was almost non-existent. You could see here in the foreground and background out of focus areas where you'd expect to see a color cast, this was nice and clean. So overall, this lens behaves very nicely. Now when we go to the zoo, they've got some interesting conservatories there, lots of butterflies and beautiful flowers and stuff like that, and I normally take a dedicated macro lens with me, but I wanted to try out the macro capabilities on this lens because they're actually quite excellent. This does its best work at 150 millimeters. You can see my working distance is right about there, which is really nice. I don't feel like I'm right up there scaring butterflies and insects away, give me a good amount of space to work with, and I'm getting approximately one to three life-size reproduction on a full-frame camera camera. Not bad at all, albeit with a fairly bulky lens. So the only issue I'm going to say there is, of course, depth of field is very shallow. So, you know, VC helps and I got to make sure my focus is accurate. And my field curvature on this lens is fairly significant, which means if I focus in the center of something, the corners do tend to go pretty out of focus. So make sure that wherever you are focused, that you're accurately focused in that spot. All right, let's talk about sharpness on the Tamron 150 to 500. We're going to start at the 150 millimeter range. First thing I'm going to say is when you're focused in the center on this lens, even wide open, it's very sharp. And as I stop down here to F8, in the center, not much improvement. Now the corners are pretty soft when you're focused in the center of the lens. So now let's look at specifically focusing in the corners at 150 millimeters. Here you can see it improves quite a bit wide open. When I stop down to F8, it gets even better. Now let's look at the center of the image shot at 500 millimeters. It's a very similar story. I was incredibly impressed with how sharp this lens is in the center wide open and even stop down here to F8. We're still not noticing much improvement because it's already really good on the A7R3 sensor. So here we've now focused specifically in the corner wide open at 500 millimeters. You can see again, it is somewhat soft. And if we stop down, that does help the corners a little bit. So the main takeaway on this lens is although it doesn't have a particularly fast aperture anywhere throughout the range, you can happily shoot it wide open and get very sharp results. And if you're using this on an APS-C Sony, well, those soft corners aren't going to be much of an issue. So in conclusion, this lens was really nice to use, but it's going to get absolutely compared to the Sony 200 to 600, which is kind of the gold standard right now for that kind of extreme telephoto range. That lens has faster aperture than this. That lens can take teleconverters, but it is also more expensive and bulkier and heavier. This represents a significant savings in money. It still gives you really good range, and optically, I was very pleased with its performance. Now, there's also the Sigma 100 to 400, also an excellent lens. Doesn't quite give you as much range is this, but it is definitely more compact, less money. So this really does sit exactly where I'd expect it to for its price point. But there is a downside here. I mean, we have to remember that this Tamron has at 500 millimeters a 6.7 as its maximum wide aperture. That's not great. And, you know, we're shooting on very bright, sunny day. I got a lot of sample photos for you guys at 100 ISO so that the camera isn't really factoring into the image quality. But in realistic terms, a lot of the shots I had to do were at higher ISOs, 400, sometimes 1600 or higher, because I can't get motion blur with a 500 millimeter lens like this, and I needed a fast shutter speed. Even with image stabilization involved here, you know, 500th of a second was kind of the slowest that I want to go on moving animals. And even still, I did have a lot of shots that I couldn't use. So keep in mind that if you buy this lens, you might be very often raising your ISO in order to get sharp pictures. And that's going to factor into your overall image quality. Anyways, I hope this video helps you guys decide if this lens is right for you. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And please do subscribe to the channel. Go to deepreview.com. You can check out the sample galleries that we got from the Calgary Zoo. Otherwise, we will see you guys soon.